Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 531. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because here's what I know about you. I know that you have a desire to build cash flow. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. More importantly, many of you, you're in the process of where you actually already have a job of some kind. And you're like, man, I'm building. Maybe you're building it as a side hustle at the beginning. And you're like, one day. I will get myself out of this job and I'll be able to do it full time. And you're envisioning yourself being able to do that. But right now, you just haven't yet. Well, I have with me today someone who's not been only been able to work themselves out of their job, but they've been able to start a very successful company called ShowMeTheRental.com. Now, you probably have already guessed that Show Me The Rental has something to do with real estate, which is great. But most importantly, in my opinion, it has something to do with one of the most challenging parts of real estate. And I think you're going to enjoy listening how that started. I have with me none other than Cliff Hayden. He is the founder of ShowMeTheRental.com. And what's really interesting is that when it comes down to it, you're going to learn from him about things like automation. Now, imagine being able to automate any part of your real estate business. That's what I can get excited about because with automation, you can scale to all kinds of unimaginable heights. So let's get ready to listen. Let's get ready to love and let's get ready to learn from Cliff Hayden. Cliff, how are you doing? I'm good, Jay. How are you doing? So far, so good. So far, so good. So this being the first time you're here, though, what I want to do is I got to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else the first time that they're here. Are you ready? I'm. Let's roll. Okay. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. For example, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman. You know, you get the idea. Because I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, occasionally as an entrepreneur, I can envision myself running around town using our products and services and saving our customers one sale at a time. And yes, (laughs) at that moment, I'm probably wearing a cape. Also, though, like a superhero, there's this beginning For example, if you think about Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing, trying to take some photos, earn some extra pizza money. And then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers, hmm, I have a superhuman ability. And he has to choose whether to use that ability for good or for evil. So my question to you, Cliff, is as follows. Before ShowMeTheRental.com, before being a real estate investor, before being a, a broker owner of all tech properties... Before everything that we know you for today, what we want to know is, who is Cliff Hayden? It's a great question. So Cliff Hayden is a happily married man with five beautiful kids. Um, And I enjoy spending time with my kids and making sure they're going to be good people when they grow up, the best that I can anyway. So um, that's basically my life. I do real estate. Um, I've kind of have new priorities now, which is to live more of an abundant life and have a lifestyle that I I can really enjoy. And I do real estate um, also. And, and I've automated my business to where now I'm very mobile. So we travel a lot with the kids and, and I love to travel and meet new people and talk and and I uh, meet people like you, Jay. So um, <laughs> that's that's what I do now. That's my that's my life. And I'm, I'm um, you know, it has its ups and downs still. But overall, I'm, I'm very happy and uh, a lot less stressed than I used to be when I first started this business. OK, so this is going to be good because, see, there's a number of people who are who are listening right now 
and they are currently stressed. And then you said something about you have new n- rearranged or new priorities now. So I was like, that suggests that there was a time where it wasn't a hundred percent smooth sailing. So no, <laughs> no, that never. <laughs> But that, that's what makes it fun. I mean, that's part of it. You got to realize you they're going to I'm big in a sport. So I tell all my kids, when you get knocked down, you got two choices. You either lay down on the ground and get kicked on or you get back up and fight back. So <laughs> just like in business, it's the same concepts. One hundred percent. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. Now, many of our listeners, though, are also starting from a position that you were mentioning uh, in terms of starting with the job and trying to get their way out of it. What what I want to know is when you because here's the thing I know many are dealing with that they want to leave but they feel stuck and for some reason you were able to develop the courage to say goodbye could you tell us about how you were able to do that I will and I, and I got I think it's a very cool story I'm, I'm kind of proud of this story so I, I had a real job before real estate and I worked at AT AT&T and I was an outside plant technician which is a fancy word for construction worker so I was in the, yeah, they put those fancy terms on there. So people think you're <laughs> smart. So I was, I uh, worked the bucket trucks. You saw us all around. Uh, we, put up, we, we traveled, uh, the storm damages and made good money going out of town on storms. But I worked in Louisville, Kentucky and I worked bucket trucks for 10 years of my life. That's the first, it's my first real good job. And so, um, how I transitioned was, I'm kind of proud of this. I, I hold the longest suspension in AT&T history, uh, that I know of anyway. So I got to, I got, I know, you know, um, I, I think we got time. I'll tell you the story. So yeah. I got to spend it for four and a half months. Uh-huh. And, and so I was doing real estate while I was working there. Um, uh, probably after about year five or six, I realized the corporate life, um, wasn't for me. So mm-hmm. when I was at at t my goal was to be a manager, be a second level, be a third level, work my way up to top and, um, you know, be in that corporate world. Uh, well, I found out very quickly that I was I felt like a puppet on a string mm. and that the people I thought cared about me or that, Hey, we're a family here and you really want me to succeed. It wasn't that way at all. Um, and so through some harsh lessons, um, I found out that I just, I don't like it here. Mm-hmm. And so I was starting to work my way out. So I, I started, um, I, and I made good money. So in, in my early twenties, I was making 80 to a hundred thousand a year with overtime, mm. uh, working my tail off. And so I took that money and, um, um, and I, I kind of told you earlier, I, my brother and sister-in-law were in the military. And when they came back from the war, my brother-in-law was big into Robert Kiyosaki and brought me uh, rich dad, poor dad and cash flow. And so I started paying, playing cash flow. I'll never forget that night I played it. I was like, man, you can really do stuff like this. <laughs> and it was just like an eye opener. Like I remember sitting there, my brother-in-law remembers like I wouldn't, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was like looking up at the ceiling, like just my mind was turning like, this is really cool. Um, and I was looking for something and I, and I, and I found it. And so I started buying real estate. So let me back up a little bit. Um, I had some money saved up from when I went out of town and I got and rich dad had a coaching program and ended up buying a duplex using that program. Uh, Wasn't a good buy, horrible buy. Everything else about rich dad I liked, but that particular thing was not good. But it got me into real estate Mm -hmm. and it got me to a mentor, a guy named Mike Butler that I met uh, because while I was getting a loan for this duplex, they told me about a local real estate club that they had. So I went to that and a uh, speaker that night was Mike Butler, who became my mentor. Uh, he's a friend of I come from a big family and he was a friend of the family that I didn't know of at the time. And he kind of took me under his wing and helped me. So I started buying more rentals while I was working a full time job. Um, and I asked Mike that question, like, man, I want to quit. But how do I quit? He's like, you'll just know when it's time because I don't have a magic <laughs> ball. But you'll just know you'll know when you're at that time in your life where, man, if I can do this full time or I know that I can make it. And so um I didn't know. I felt it. And so being a being a bucket truck, driving a bucket truck, I had a CDL license, which mm-hmm. means you get mm-hmm. random drug test. So on the random drug test, they it, it couldn't have happened at a better time because I was at that crossroad and I uh, didn't have enough vacation to take off. So they they popped me with a random drug test. And I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to take it. And so when you don't take it, it's an automatic fail and you got to go to rehab. And so in rehab, Again, just stuff that happens in your life that's so cool. Uh-huh. My rehab counselor was my actual next, my aunt and uncle's next door neighbor. <laughs> so I talked to him about what I was doing, and I was like, "Man, I don't, you know, I don't have a drug problem at all. I just, you know, I want to know if I can do this before I walk away because I, I come from very humble beginnings. We're a very lower middle, lower middle class family. So you know, my parents were go to college, get a job, blah, you know, do you know, work in that cor- corporate world. 
So anyway, I talked to the counselor and um, I somehow or another turned eight hours of rehab into four and a half months. And, and so finally, <laughs> finally, my boss at at t called and said, you got till two days to get back or you're fired. And I said, you know what? I think I'm good. I'm going to quit. And, and in that four and a half months, um, I made my entire salary um, for doing real estate full time. So I knew it was time to walk away. That's how it worked for me. That's creative <laughs> to yeah. say the least that is the most creative exit i think i've heard in quite some time and i definitely appreciate the the mentor saying you'll know when it's time i think there's a number of people who feel like it's time but was there anything in particular that gave you the courage to actually finally say to your boss yeah i'm, I'm gonna quit what was that thing that said okay i it's time. What was that? Did you hear a voice? What did the heavens part? What was it? No, it's it's a great question. And, and so when I was at, it was Bell South when I started there and then AT&T bought them out. It was an internet transition. When I started there, it was pretty fun. Like I love, we worked in a crew. I mean, we had a fun, days were, it was a fun job. And then when AT&T took over, it was more of a business. And then they started brow, they started beating you up on all these rules and regulations. And mm. it became, it was just not fun anymore. Like I would, I would be happy. And then when I walked into the, to our, uh, where our crew met, I would just be like, man, this sucks. Like, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Um, it just got to the point where I was just not happy. And I just, I, I just needed to do something else. Um, and then I just, I, at that time I had probably 10 or 15 rental houses and they were, you know, doing pretty okay. Um, they were the wrong houses, which I didn't know at the time because I was new. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I knew that, you know, I have this money coming in a little bit here and there. And then if I can do some more real estate stuff, some rehabs, and I actually became a, a buyer's agent for several years when I quit. And, uh, you know, I made way more money than I ever thought I could. And I had fun doing it again. I was enjoying working again yeah that that's amazing because a lot of people would lo love to enjoy working uh and you yes. say again but some have never experienced it uh, you know ever so talk to us about that that first day because i oftentimes when you're used to you know working a, a corporate position and then you go you know what here's the line i am now not going to do the corporate job anymore sometimes that first monday you wake up and you might feel a little panic or, or, or a little like, oh, my God, what did I do? What, what, what was that like for you? You know, I was I couldn't have been more excited. Um, <laughs> so um, I literally, I, you know, at my job, you know, I, I'm a young I'm a young, dumbass kid at the time. And so I'm in my early 20s. So I'm thinking I can do better than this boss. And this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I'm an arrogant kind of mm -hmm. young kid. And so I thought, man, if I can do this on my own, I can work outwork anybody. And so my first day, um, I actually uh, worked for, a, like I said, a foreclosure agent in town. And I had some good timing going on because I got into the for a buyer's agent as a foreclosure at buyer's agent at, you know, seven, eight, nine, 2007, eight, nine, which mm. was a great time to be a foreclosure agent. Yep. And so um, I got in the office earlier than everybody and left later than everybody. So I would get in at six or so in the morning and I would leave around six or so at night. Um, so for, for the next, I want to say five or six years. Um, I worked and worked and worked and I thought I was doing becoming successful. But the problem was, as we talked before, my old priorities were money was the goal. Mm. Uh, I didn't use money as a tool, which is what I do now. And so I was so engulfed and focused from my background and where I come from that, man, if I get to this spot and have this much money, I'm going to be happy. Well, if I can get this here, I'm going to be happy. And the whole time financial wise, I was doing great, but my family life was not doing well at all. Uh, yeah. My wife was not happy. Um, I would come home for dinner. And when I come home, I was never present. I was either texting people or my phone would ring or I was on the email. Um, I was just engulfed in it um, because I thought at that time as a man and as a husband, that's what I was supposed to do was provide. Um, I was providing, but I, I really wasn't providing, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, so, 100%. So um, I did that. I, after a few years of that and just um, um, not spending the time that I should have on my family, I, I, there had to be a change. So I thought where I, what should make me happy, I was more miserable than I ever was. And I'll never forget, I met a guy, um, we were at a, a I want to say some kind of mastermind group, and he had a, one of those life-changing moments. He said, you know, Cliff, he goes, 
you know, you, you spend all this time and, and effort on real estate. He goes, what if you would spend it on your wife? How would that make her feel? Um, what would that do? And I remember going, man, like a, just a gut shot. Like, you know, I don't spend, I don't do that. And so there were several of those type of conversations and I just knew something had to change. Um, because money is fun and it's great. And, and again, Jay, this is easy to say when you have some, when you're first starting off, mm -hmm. I mean, you do go through those struggles, but for me where I'm at right now, that's what had to change. Got and it. so, um, it, it went from there and I started putting systems in place and, and my whole goal for the last five, five plus years is to be able to be mobile, uh, run my business wherever I'm at, have some people in place that I trust and do a good job and, uh, kind of put life first and everything else, you know, behind it. Yeah, totally understood. Now, there's a number of people right now when when you and I ever talk about the, the idea of being able to be in real estate, but be anywhere in the world and still be able to run the business. Uh, I've seen many heads turn and I know someone picked up on that uh, with you saying that just now. What would you say has been the keys to allowing yourself to be able to still have a, a real estate business, which is hyper local? And most people feel like they're chained to their property. I can't go anywhere because I've got to deal with the property. But yet that doesn't seem to be true for you. So what do you think made that happen? You know, it comes down to choices and, and in my mind, uh, lifestyle. So you got to figure out for me, I start figuring out what lifestyle I want it. What do I want for my life? Money's great. But at the end of the day, when you're, you know, um, on your deathbed, nobody, I read an article, nobody ever says, man, I wish I would have made more money. I wish I would have worked <laughs> longer. I wish I would have done this longer. Right. Everybody says, I wish I spent more time with family or spoke up more, done different things uh, to be, to be heard. And, and so what I did is um, I put systems in place for management. I got rid of all my headache houses. I had a lot of houses and, uh, you know, for some reason, and I don't know why, but that hundred house mark is what everybody says. You get a hundred houses, you're good. And I don't know why it is in our town, but that's kind of what you go to. And, and so I started just educating myself and I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. Mm. And, and, and what I've learned is, you know what, if you don't have a lot of debt, you don't need a lot of money. And, and so I kind of, <laughs> I kind of, I, I, I live by that now and I'm in a debt reduction payment snowball plan now uh, from some stuff I have. And I, I try to pay off all my houses and I've sold off. I'm down to 20 something houses now. Um, but they're a and B they're, they're, I say a and B they're, they're higher end, nicer houses. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have the headache of tenants because the tenants I have now, their first priority is rent. You know, there is a roof over their head. They want to provide for their families where before when I bought and, and it, as when you're new, I understand it. You almost, unless you have something special, it, it's unless you're a doctor, a high paying job, you know, it's hard to start off buying nice houses. You kind of need to upgrade to them. And, and so I had those headache houses where rent was the fourth or fifth priority for tenants. And then you're always chasing them down. You're always filing seven day letters, eviction, set outs. You, 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 you got headaches going on. They seem they can't fix stuff. For some reason, they want to call you like you're a holiday in. So I, I sat down and I made sure that, I, you know, the lifestyle that I wanted, I had to build my business around that lifestyle. Instead of the business building around me, I built the business around what how I wanted to spend my time. And since I've been doing that over the last several years, it's just uh, life's a lot better. I, I enjoyed a lot more. Yeah, I, I totally understand what you mean by headache houses. I have told I've been right there. So yes. what would you say? in this transition that has um, uh, uh, what has made the most difference? Because there's a lot of people who would love to experience what you're experiencing. Was there one particular system? Was there one part of real estate that, that you've been able to, to put the systems in place and automate that has made the most difference? And if so, what was that? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to back up to, to dinners at home. And, okay. And so when I would come home, so the problem is when you have headache, I call them headache houses or too many houses. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you always have, you know, you get up in the 50, 60, 50, 60 property range. You're always going to have a turnover. You're always going to have eviction. I mean, more than likely you're going to have stuff going on. Um, and, and so when I would come home, I would, if I had empty houses, it would freak me out. Like I wanted them rented fast. Mm -hmm. And so when I come home at dinner, I would be answering a phone call, uh, answering texts. And I found myself saying the same things over and over. I have to give them a description of the house. It's a three bedroom, one bath, basement, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> How long are you on your current job? 
How much money you have in the bank? Are you willing to sign a three-year lease? Or blah, you know, I just kept asking the same questions, and I was like, you know what? Right. This could be this can be automated. Um, this can be automated, and so I went out and tried to find a, a company that did that, um, that kind of advertised for you, generated leads, did pre-screening questions, automated showings, uh, sent them applications, and I couldn't find anything, and mm -hmm. so basically I invented it, I created it myself, um, and that's I created a company called Show Me the Rental. And that's kind of what it does. It, I say it gives you your time back so you can have dinner with your family. Because my wife would get so mad. I don't know if you remember Superman fan. But Superman would get real mad and his eyes would turn red and shoot lasers out of his eyes. Uh, if my wife could shoot lasers out of her eyes, that's how mad she would get. <laughs> because, um, and, and we were, and it was, it was just, we, we were not having fun at home. Because she was like, you need to be with your family and do this. And we would argue about the kids. And I was like, you know, I'm, I am see this food on the table. This is how it gets here. We got to rent these houses. We got to make money because this is how we have what we have. So we were both right, but we were both wrong because we were, you know, there were better ways to handle both of it. And, yeah. and so that system, show me the rental. Um, you know, of course I'm partial, but it saves us so much time. I don't talk to tenants anymore. I don't, or I don't talk to leads anymore. I don't show houses. I don't do any of that. It's, that's all automated. And that's been a huge part of our business to that's a, that's a major system that, that helps us out. Well, um, another thing. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go no, ahead. no. Go ahead. Well, I well, here's what I was going to say. What I like about this is the fact that, you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of great companies, great ideas, uh, start as you solving your own problem. <laughs> you know, you're like, I, this is my problem. How do I solve it? And screening, Tenants is by far one of the most, uh, well, I'll say not fun parts of the job. You know, you're like, man, another one. But it's actually one of the most necessary because, as you alluded to, vacancy is by far the most expensive thing uh, a landlord can have. So you, you found a way to take the problem. You know, you still have to deliver the result, i.e. occupied houses, but at the same time, without it taking without it occupying your time and that that's what i really like about what you did was there another system though that you were about to say hello there entrepreneur this is jay massey and what i want to say to you is that the number one mistake that i have ever made in business number one has been waiting too long to do the books waiting too long to get the bookkeepers the accountants the cpas the cfos involved and i don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures, and now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using Fresh Books. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Fresh Books is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. Yeah, so we use, like, there's so much stuff out there, too. So I know everybody probably uses something different, but now we're at a technology age, and so it seems like every few months there's some great product coming out. And so, um, you know, we use Buildium also. I don't know if there's, there's different app or mm -hmm, companies mm -hmm. that do uh, mm -hmm. property management, but Buildium for us works great. Uh, I know there's Appfolio. There's, yep. there's several other ones, but just kind of getting those systems in place. And, and, you know, I want it to be mobile. I said that earlier. So when I got online companies – um, I can check on stuff mobily. So, so basically, when I'm out of town traveling now, I have I do have a, a property manager. Mm -hmm. He just and all he does, um, he just handles work orders, applications, and leases. Mm -hmm. I still handle all the money. Um, I still make sure all you know. I I sign all the checks. I don't write. I don't print the checks, but I sign them all. Make sure I handle all the money. And so when I leave, he's in place to take care of all that necessary stuff. Um, and then we meet with uh, we meet once a week and go over. Um, we got a little daily agenda or weekly agenda. We go over, go over what we got. And, and I also have a, ad, a admin, um, and she's actually a virtual assistant out of North Carolina. And then she basically, um, one of the big things I did that helped me out is I, I took a, I can't think of the guy's name was Bart and he was, I can't think of where he was from, but I never forget. I met him. He came to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and he's a friend of, uh, the broker I used to work for. And he said, you know what I did? 
I took a piece of paper, drew a line down, drew, down in the middle of it, and I wrote what I like to do and what I don't like to do. And then I went out and hired somebody who did what I don't like to do. And he goes, it changed my life. And, and, and so I have a virtual assistant who they're not very expensive, and she does all the crap I don't like to do. Right. Uh, and then we meet weekly and go over projects, and then she, she, she's great. And she's a retired mom, and uh, I can't, I, man, I couldn't do stuff without her. And so I just put those little systems in place uh, based on the life that I wanted. And so I could do what I wanted with my kids and my family. And um, that's, that's basically what I do. Yeah, no, uh, I get that. It, it's like yeah. you, the, you found a way to practically take the board game cash flow and play it in real life. That's, that's what you've done. And yes. I, I like that. I tell people that, yeah, that's it. Cause when people ask me, you know, what do I do? I'm like, eh, it's, better that you play this game then you'll understand <laughs> i it, love the game i still play it today i still yes. love it yes yes yeah. we my my kids love it too um they they want to play feels like every day uh and it's it it's a part of our life now you mentioned that you do a lot of property management and i know that that's a thing for a number of investors that are listening and entrepreneurs they they're having trouble finding a good one. They don't know what to ask the the ones that they are finding. Have if you've reduced this process, I'm going to assume not only are you good at knowing uh, what to to ask a tenant, but you probably can shed some light on hey, how could I? What do I ask? Or what do I? How do I find a good property manager as well? Because other people want to duplicate what you're doing. Now, this is a tough one. You're probably not going to it's not going to be a great answer. OK, so um, I manage for myself and then some friends in our little in our network work, network in town because mm-hmm. I only manage certain types of houses and certain types of customers because that's all I want to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it's really hard to find a property manager because my motto is nobody's going to care about your house as much as you do. Right. Um, so as far as screening to find one, I don't I don't have a good answer because they're all. I mean, their job is to make money and to do a good job for you. But they're, I don't feel like in our town anyway, I don't know anybody that's going to care about and set my house up, the plumbing, the electrical, set it up the way I do my houses, each one of them, to um, the, the way I, I like and to my standards. And, mm-hmm. and that it's going to care about repairs and what's going on um, more than I do. So I got Gary in my office who does a great job. And like I said, you heard me earlier, we meet weekly. But he's been around and we've worked together so long, you know, every house we do is the same. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when we go into a house and one thing new people I didn't do in the beginning is so I, I buy brick ranches. I buy a little three bedroom, two bath brick ranches with basements and a garage, a simple hip roof, uh, one plumbing stack. And, and we go in and set them up so they're going to last for 20 years. So we redo all the drain lines. We run pecs with no cuts in there and they're home run everywhere. Um, so we know there's not going to be a problem with plumbing right. or water lines for the next 20 years unless the tenant customer does something, right. um, which with the houses we have now, we don't have that too often. Right. With electrical, we make sure everything's up to code. We put new panels in. We get everything ready. So the only thing problem we should really have is cosmetic um, or something here and there. But we do Delta faucets on everything, single handle. Uh, you know, we set our houses up in a way so they're going to have longevity. And if something does break, our maintenance guy, you know, it's all the same stuff. So he doesn't have to have a bunch of different parts to fix anything. It's all, everything we do is the same. And so when you find a property manager that I don't know if, if they don't do real estate, they don't set your house up that way. So you're just going to have problems and you're going to have repairs. And and I think there's a lot more to it, To I don't know how you find a good one uh, because I don't know any in our town that do it. Uh, besides their own, the ones that do it, that don't, that the ones that I know that do it, they don't have their own properties. They're just management companies. So I, I don't know if that's a good answer, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a good answer is what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, you, you, you actually have a great answer. What you said is the best property manager is probably yourself. Yes. That's yes. That, that, <laughs> you said, yes. look in the mirror. And I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. And, and yet at the same time, there's a number of people who don't want to take that on, which which also makes sense as well. But there's yes. nothing wrong with electing yourself the best property manager for all the reasons that you have stated. Now, then let's let's try the other side, uh, because I know if you're going to systematize the process of screening tenants, uh, what what would you say are your like? top three questions that you like, you like, look, you don't understand. You have to ask this if you're going to 
try to screen tenants or automate this process in any way? It's a great question. So what we're looking for is longevity. We're looking for a customer, a long lasting customer. So we don't do any one year leases because after one year they move out, you just lost money. Unless the house is paid for, more than likely you're going to lose money. And so we're looking for somebody who's going to stay there um, long term. That's our number one question. Uh, how long then if it's not one year? Our minimum leases are three to five years. Uh, that's On residential? On residential, yes. Interesting. This is cool. Keep going. So the other thing we ask is how long you've been on your job? Because we want somebody reliable that, you know, is not jumping around every year, every few years, finding a new job. Um, and then the third one is um, how much money do you have in your bank accounts? So we want somebody kind of like a Dave Ramsey who is responsible that they have a reserve account or they have a little bit of money in there. So if something goes wrong, you know, they're going to be able to survive for a little while. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for a higher quality kind of customer. And for us and for my lifestyle that I'm choosing uh, or that I have now, um, those customers in our experiences stay for a long time and eventually upgrade and up buying a house. And those are the kind of customers we want because when they do leave our houses, they're not they're I mean, some of them are just they're already rent ready as soon as they get out. And, and a lot of our customers we build relationships with, we actually, um, we show me the rental. You can actually show the house while somebody's living there. Autom it automates the whole process. So if you've got a good relationship with your current tenant, you know, they have a calendar and they go in and schedule appointments and we give them money to uh, rent the house before they move out. And so that whole streamlined process is just um, such a stress reliever and a time saver uh, for us. And so those three questions are what we ask, because I want to know that you're going to stay and that you have money. Uh, you got a good job. You've been on a job for a while and you have money in the bank so you can pay your bills. And, and those are our three main questions. I got to imagine this this shift, you know, to things like, you know, if you're on a three to five year lease cycle. Like, when's the last time you actually had to move in a tenant? Because I'm guessing it's, you don't have to do that anywhere near as frequently as you used to. You know, we might do a couple a year if yeah. that's about it. That's what I was yes. <laughs> thinking. I'm like, you don't have to do that. So uh, don't take this the wrong way. But Cliff, what are you doing? You got nothing to do, man. I'm talking to you, Jay. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I love this. So, so this is this is the lifestyle we decided. So so what we did like this summer, um, I'm going to brag a little and I hate to do that. But so I have five kids and, and one of my goal is to, I guess, educate my kids um, to understand that the, the world that's out there. So this summer we went on a 40 day RV trip and we rented an RV and went out West for 40 days. And, and what I did along the way is I, cause I was pitching, showing the rental. I, I, I spoke at different RIA groups. I went to uh, the national RIA and was a um, vendor there. And so we turned the trip into a business slash family trip uh, to write a bunch of it off, which was very cool. So that's what we've been doing. And, and my goal is to now, um, I'm home every day by three o'clock to get my, I got three little ones. I got two older ones and three little ones. Mm. So I got two teenagers and, and three still in, in grade school mm -hmm. or elementary school. And so I'm home by three o'clock every day. I help with their homework, uh, because I can actually do their homework because they're still in, you know, first, second, third grade. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, uh, so that's, that's a lot. Of, that's what I do. And, um, and I'm trying to teach them, um, just lessons, um, and so it is, if you, I go on tangent, so I apologize, but we, we meet, I have a, uh, like a breakfast meeting every Wednesday. And actually, so we met this morning at a local little breakfast, breakfast spot and we talk. And so one of the things I worry about with my kids, because I came from very humble beginnings is I want them to understand what that means. So they're sheltered a little bit, which I think every parent wants their kid to be like, you want your kids to be better than you. But we, we live in a nice place now. Um, they don't see the things I saw. They don't have to grow up as fast as some kids do, depending on where they're from. And um, and so at some point, though, I want them, I know it sounds harsh, but I want them to be poor. I want them to know what it's like. to. That's what we talked about today, to be poor, not to struggle and not to be unhappy, but just to understand um, the value of a budget and the value of survivor skills to you know, do without or to if something's broke, you can fix it. You don't have to buy new something new. So we talk about this a lot. That's what I spend a lot of time doing is just really making sure my kids are going to be OK, because I worry about that, because if you're successful, that's great. But I heard a saying, if your kids are screwed up, then what's what's it matter? Right. Um, and so that's that's what I spend a lot of time doing is focusing now on what's important to me, which is my new goal, which is an abundant life and and teaching my kids um about that stuff and letting them see things out in the, in the real world and talk to people and, and um, help.
I love it 100%. Now, for those that have listened this far and want to find out more about what you've got going on, what's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you? Um, there's a few ways. You can go to Cliff at showmetherental.com and shoot me any questions. Um, I'll try to get back to you usually within a, a day or two. Um, or if you're you not busy me. traveling somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and I still, I still, you know, I do. So I got routines now. So now I have a morning, a night routine, a morning routine. Um, I do time blocking now a little bit. So I'm not just, I used to be, you know, 50 things at once and you just mm -hmm. overwhelmed. So I do a little bit different I'm, and I'm still not perfect at it, but I'm getting better. So I try to always try to get better at that. And so I'll get back to you during the time blocking. If I, you know, I usually time block from 12 to one and, and four to five to answer emails and stuff like that. Um, and I get to you when I can. And then I don't mind if they send me a, a quick phone call or text. Cause I don't know. Um, I don't mind that at all. I like talking to people, uh, when I got time, but they can call me at, uh, 502-641-8781. Um, I think it's 502-641-8781. If I can help at all or got any questions, I don't mind doing that at all. Awesome. Excellent. Now, as we wind down here, I have a final question for you because I'm curious to hear your answer, especially given how you got started. Um, I know that there's a number of individuals who have been inspired by the words that you have said today, and, and they are at that point, uh, that precipice of decision is what I like to call it, where they're going, you know what? Cliff did it that way man, I can do this. I can make this happen. I, I can, you know, it's time for me to go get some units or maybe it's time for me to get to a hundred uh, houses or maybe it's time for me to upgrade the quality. They're like, you know what? That's it. I'm drawing the line in the sand. It's ready to go. Now, you know, like I know, Cliff, that when decisions like that come down, uh, we often have a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice. And it's a voice that reminds us of well, you remember what happened last time you tried real estate? I mean, you, you're you going to own how many houses? You? Really? And for some people, they're related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that this time they're going to actually follow through. They're going to do exactly what you suggest, Cliff. And they're going to do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? That's a great question. Um... I, I don't know how to say it any better than it's kind of like Nike. You just do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, the fear of the unknown is very scary. Um, so if you're going to do anything worthwhile, you're going to have to take risks and get out of that comfort zone. And you're just going to have to push and, and, and realize that there's going to be ups and downs and you're going to fail. That's that's kind of part of it. And the failures are, you know, you hear it all the time, but it's easy to say once you've been there, the failures help you learn more from that than you do anything else. It's never going to be. I, I love the business plan models where, or stock plans where everything just goes up in the portfolio. Right. But in real life, it goes, it crashes, comes back up, come, you know, that persistency and that drive that just, you know, I'm not going to quit. Um, I, I'm a big Dave Chappelle fan. And so I never forget listening to an interview for him. And um, he was talking about, you know, he was real young and the first time he bombed and he was on stage and he goes, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm, he goes, at that time he's a young kid and he goes, everybody's booing me and yelling. And he goes, you know what? It wasn't that bad. So the fear of of what's going to happen because you don't know is what's overwhelming. But once you get through it, it's, it's really not that bad. But, you know, you, I can't make people do it, but I'm just telling them from my experiences, it's not that bad. The yeah. math is pretty simple. You do a, It's a simple math problem on real estate. Um, I would suggest you have a plan, you know, get a plan down, have a vision, you know, get some local real estate clubs and then learn systems. And then... It's all easy, but it's all it's all little steps, and you just got to keep wanting to get better and improve. And if you do that, I think you're going to make it no matter what. Agreed. Uh, I like it. I like exactly what you're saying, uh, and I appreciate you. You know, taking on the challenge of elevating beyond just you know getting more houses and, and creating the lifestyle that you have desired. And I definitely want to be the first to to thank you for taking the time to. Invest your knowledge, wisdom, and insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary. Jay, I really appreciate it. You did a great job. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? Well, I think that means you know you heard you know what you heard. You heard, man, I need to know more about what's going on. I need to start taking action. Man, you're telling me I can have a hundred houses, I can have a better lifestyle, and show me the rental.com can help me do that. Yes, that's exactly what we're telling you. I mean, if nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, you now know that not only money is not the goal, it's just the tool 
But it doesn't really matter. Even if you're starting in a bucket truck, you got a shot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.